Hi everyone, uh, thank you for joining. My name is Lara. Uh, while we're waiting perhaps for a few more people to uh, join us uh, today, I'd like to briefly introduce myself, uh, ELU, and also our uh, agenda for today. So uh, I work as a community manager for European Leadership University, and uh, we are a next generation university focused on bridging the tech skills gap with Sorry, one second. Sorry about that. I uh, work from Istanbul, so every now and then the uh, call to prayer is interrupting my audio a little bit. I hope this is all right for you. Um, so again, uh, European Leadership University, it's a university focused on the tech skills gap. We deliver programs that are competency based, um, flexible online for working professionals who would like to move into, for example, a career in data science. But also we work with different partners in the Netherlands um, to either uh, upskill people within the company or uh, give uh, additional uh, training on data science. We also see that there is a wish in the market for data scientists to come together. And it is for that reason that we have been offering this series, Building a Data Science Team. So this is the second rendition of the series. Now we've already had webinars and panel discussions on topics like the skill set required, management strategies, um, how to recruit and build up your team of data. And today we're going to have a bit of a different format. We're going to have a workshop, so um, more interactive, and it will be hosted by Amsterdam Data Collective, specifically by Kasparitis, who will be uh, head of public sector there. Um, also, Fiviana is also with us, also a consultant at Amsterdam Data Collective. Now, I believe they will also be introducing themselves a bit more uh, when we get started. But thank you very much for joining. Uh, I think we will be having some um, at times where you might be invited to also bring your voice in uh, and open up your mic. But uh, when you're not speaking, please mute your mic. Uh, and of course, if you have any troubles or questions, please reach me through the chat and I'll assist you. So thank you again. And without further ado, I'll give the floor to you, Kasper. Thank you so much. Um, so before Viviana and me uh, will introduce ourselves, maybe I can give the floor to the other people that well, um, more people come in. Uh, we will uh, be the last to uh, introduce ourselves. So I see already four uh, joining the session. Maybe Brian, can you uh, shortly introduce yourself? Oh, hi, good afternoon or good, good evening. Um, my name is Brian. I saw this uh, workshop uh, come across uh, via LinkedIn. It, it seems to be interesting. I've been working, uh, I did a career switch uh, past year uh, from education to uh, uh, BI and uh, data science. So uh, at the moment I'm trying to consume as much uh, uh, as I can to learn more about uh, this field. And uh, at my place of work where I'm actually the first one in my team that's busy with, with data. So. Uh, I hope that in the future we will have some more colleagues. So I thought this will be a, a, a good starting point for me to give input. Very That's nice. Um, Alper? Oops. Hi, my name is, uh, well, I, I work with uh, Lara in European Leadership University. I'm leading European Leadership University. And um, um, I think the, I, I, I it's, it's exciting for me um, to be in this workshop because um, uh, it gives us, it gives me and us a better pulse of um, our clients and the, 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 the market, the network and everything. So thank you so much, uh, Jasper, for uh, facilitating it with us. So, and I will pass it to you for to pass the next person. Thanks. Um, I. I think I lost one. Let me see. Yes. Oh, Arthur is just joining. Coming back. Yeah. Arthur? Yes. Would you like to introduce yourself? 
Yes, I would. I, I just, I just uh, <laughs> jumped into the session, but uh, okay, yes. I'm a team lead. I work uh, <coughs> for a, uh, a water board in the Netherlands, and uh, I'm currently uh, building a data management team, a data science team. So I'm very much at the start. I have an uh, ICT background. I've been working for years, 30 years, some 30 years in the ICT and uh, always in the world of uh, water management. And I just uh, started uh, at the water board. I come from a, a bigger company called Deltaris. We, do, we did the Delta research over there. And uh, I just started in a new role as team lead of the data management team. So um, yeah, it, uh, currently the team uh, has a foundation of uh, data that's coming in and it's being managed. Um, but we're uh, currently expanding that in the world of data science. Interesting. It's also uh, very nice to have the, a team lead and also one of, uh, from education. Um, I will share my screen now and uh, we will introduce ourselves. Let's see if this works. Um, okay. Can you see my screen? Yes, perfect. Perfect, okay. So um, myself, I'm Casper uh, Rutjes, head of public sector of Amsterdam Data Collective. Uh, Amsterdam Data Collective is a uh, full stack end-to-end -end data science agency, uh, primarily um, based in the Netherlands uh, on different sectors, finance, uh, health, and public. And uh, my background is a PhD in computational science, uh, physics and mathematics. I've worked um, on several data science projects from small ones of a few months or to uh, 20 uh, people, uh, big groups. And uh, one of my uh, colleagues, Viviane, is also here. Maybe Viviane, you want to introduce yourself? Yes, uh, yeah, I'm uh, Viviane Haring. Uh, well, I work as a senior data science consultant at Amsterdam Data Collective, and uh, also have done already some projects, uh, some data science projects, mostly in the financial sector uh, at the bigger banks, and also, uh, yeah, I've done some uh, more data engineering uh, projects because before you can do data science, you of course also need to have uh, good quality data. Um, so yeah, that's me. Okay, um, to uh, show a little bit more about Amsterdam Data Collective, there's a one minute uh, video I would like to share. Change is inevitable. Can we influence the direction of that change? What challenges lie ahead? I see a new wave of disruption induced by data science and advanced technology. Our population is aging, and the options available to us for treatment are ever-increasing. Customers expect an increasingly outstanding retail experience. Faster delivery, larger product collections, and better recommendations. Governments need to cope more and more with data, while citizens want to have an easy interaction with their government. This ever-growing landscape of new possibilities and opportunities is accompanied by dealing with new challenges. How do you make responsible models with privacy and ethics in mind? Will we accept a lower standard or will we harness the power of innovation to deliver even better care? The way we tackle these challenges will shape our future. In the future, I see AI being accountable, should be compliant and explainable. We use data science to create an optimal experience for the modern consumer without compromising their privacy. But also a future where technology gives our work more meaning. What future do you see? So, for the agenda today, um, we are going to do a design thinking workshop um, about the common difficulties in data science. And it is really a participating workshop. Uh, we will work together uh, very closely and uh, depending on the number of people, we have breakout sessions, but maybe the group 
uh, now is small enough to do it plenarily. Uh, we'll see. Um, we'll start with uh, introduction to design thinking as a methodology. Um, and we're going to execute the, the design thinking methodology on the common difficulties in data science, uh, in managing a data science team. Um, this will form uh, a better understanding about the problem, uh, about um, defining a problem statement and ideate uh, together to uh, approach this problem. Um, and I would like to challenge ourselves to uh, look at the feasibility and prioritize the idea, uh, IDEs um, for execution. And then we want to round off with a checkout. Let me see if I can see also the members. We are still with the same number of people. Yes, okay. Um, so, first about the methodology. I would like to ask um, the team uh, joining here, um, for who is design thinking a new methodology? Brian, maybe you can answer this one. I have to unmute myself. Uh, this term is something I, uh, I've recently read about, but I must say it, it is kind of new for me. Okay, and Arthur? I had to put my mic in the right place. Um, yeah, for me, it's a new way of thinking and working too. So that, that's, that's where we start, I guess. Yes. Um, so design thinking is a methodology which um, really emphasizes the um, like preparation phases before you actually go into production. So roughly speaking, you have different phases to prepare yourself to a better um, solution in the end, that's the goal. But first of all, actually to know what's the problem to address and knowing the problem better means that you need to really know who is having a problem and what is, is the, the human-centered problem statement there and what type of ideas can you formulate to address these uh, difficulties, challenges. And with design thinking, you go in a systematic way of these preparation steps. Here on the slide, you have a an, uh, an, an five-step uh, uh, way of empath empathize. Empathize meaning that you really understand the persons or the team um, or users behind uh, the product or, or uh, challenge ahead. And the second stage is then defining um, what is actually the, the, the need or the, the wish for this um, group or, or uh, target group. Then ideate would mean uh, formulate ideas to solve um, the defined problem. With the prototype, you are really going to sketch kind of the solution directions, um, maybe have a mock-up or a minimum viable product. And with testing, of course, you test and, and validate assumptions based on using the prototype. Um, what, what really have to be set here, and you can have much more reading yourself about design thinking. If you Google on, on like this terminology, you find a dozen or maybe uh, tens, uh, multiple um, uh, ways of, of making, making this structure. So there's not one sole way of doing design thinking. What is always common is this phased uh, meaning and in-depth preparation uh, and a more broad um, uh, opening of, of the problem statement and, and steps behind. Um, to show you another diagram, which is a little bit already bigger, you can see already multiple steps um, based in say inspiration, um, inspiration coming from understanding and observing 
and a point of view, a point of reference, point of view. And this is a non-linear um, phase. So you really go back and forth uh, in this and then going into ideation and then go even into implementation. So here you already go a step further when having the tests done, of course, you need to broadcast the outcomes of the test in storytelling. And then you go into a pilot and after a successful pilot, you can go into a business model. Um, and even further, you can go into, uh, say, scaling. Um, and after scaling, you say monetization. So you can even expand these steps. Um, is, 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 this is all kind of jargon or terminology, but maybe you did work with say, doing a pilot and evaluate the pilot. Maybe Arthur, uh, do you do a Deltares, uh, this type of prototyping of pilot projects? Um, yes, of course, that's a quite natural way of, of yes. doing things, I guess, so yes, yeah. And what, what do you there reckon of these type of steps? Um, well, they have been, to be honest, a bit, uh, how do you put that, Im implicit. So um, we didn't go to, through every phase, um, um, yeah, no, knowingly to be to be honest. So, but 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 still, it's 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 a quite natural way of of thinking and going forward, I guess. So to make it more explicit and and describe it better is, of course, a good way of, of going forward. And Brian, did you did you have any of these um, prototyping or pilot projects? Well, actually, uh, now that you, you uh, explain these steps, uh, I do recognize this, this series of, of steps, and I guess maybe I, uh, I never use this uh, terminology, um, but it, it, I do recognize it. So the, at the beginning, you have to gather the requirements and find out what the, the, the uh, user wants, and to find out that, you have to ask the questions, what is the problem? So I do recognize it in, within the context that you, uh, that you drew. Yeah, so um, for today in this workshop, I would like to together brainstorm about the common difficulties and address the common difficulties really structured by these type of uh, phases. And um, to, to start here, let me see, um, we want to start in the empathy phase. And from the empathy phase, we have two exercises which we want to do together. Um, and in this empathy phase, we really want to understand the uh, team members or even the manager um, of a uh, data science team and really dive into what, what do we know about this character and knowing the character very closely would highlight perspectives that maybe were untouched or um, been highlighted before and giving insights in, in the point of view, point of reference, and can solve uh, better. Let me see how many people there are now. Okay. Um, can solve misconceptions, for example. I also see that we have another member, Nicolas. So, Nicolas, maybe you can introduce yourself a bit. This is a very, um, uh, like, participating workshop that's uh, handy that everybody knows that the members in the call. So, maybe, uh, Nicolas, can you introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. I'm Nick. I'm a lead data scientist. I'm kind of freelancing and consulting at the moment. Uh, previously worked at a marketplace here in Amsterdam uh, leading the data science team. And yeah, that's me. Okay, thanks. So um, we're at the empathy phase of the design thinking process. Um, we were going to brainstorm about the common difficulties. Um, with the group size at this point, I think we uh, will not go into breakout, uh, but we're just going to do the phase uh, together. Um, so in the first exercise, let me see. Do you also see this window on top? 
maybe when this is not in this office. Okay, so I want to explain what the empathy map is, which is very handy structure in, in the first step of uh, design thinking. So what we're going to uh, do is we're going to dive into the perspective of the user. The user in this sense would be uh, either a data scientist or the data uh, science manager. Um, we want to do, we want to write down significant uh, quotes and keywords that the data scientist says. Um, but not only what he is saying or she is saying, but also what he does or, or what he uh, shows. Um, we also want to imagine what the data scientist actually thinks in the team. And even there, we need to like, think of what the data science actually feels. What type of emotions would he uh, daily have uh, in, in the team? And, and maybe this can highlight a few um, yeah, problems, um, common difficulties, which we can address. So let's see if I can uh, put a um, whiteboard on. So like this. And um, I think it's now possible that everybody is able to write on the screen. Uh, that was my idea. Um, so yeah, what I think you can do is uh, you should be able to see a bar on the top view options. And then if you uh, click on view option and choose annotate, you should be able to draw and write on the board. Uh, for all the people, yes. So um, others uh, can also join. So if, if we did this live, I would have a box form with, with post-its and um, we would have an interactive session placing the post-its to the board. So I would really uh, invite all to attend the whiteboard and also draw and uh, uh, put phrases on, um, on the whiteboard. Um, so, what, what, uh, what would a data scientist um, say commonly? What are common quotes a data scientist say? Nick. Oops. Sorry, I was struggling to get the mute there. Uh, what's the uh, context? That's an, um, so the context is common difficulties. So imagine that you are in a data science team and um, what, what would the, 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 yeah, for example, I cannot get reliable data. What kind of common difficulties uh, does a data scientist uh, experience and what does he say at that instance? What is I my, I, I cannot rely data, for example. Uh, yeah, the, the data quality is not, uh, not good. Yes, so please write it down. Sure. Um, So Viviana, what do you, you usually think <laughs> as an uh, active data scientist? Um, yeah, I think most of the time, like we don't have enough time to uh, to yeah do the assignment we have or to look at the data very carefully. Yes, can you add it? Yeah. Uh, 
And Brian, can you dare to, th to think about what the um, data scientist feels actually when having difficulties? <laughs> I would guess uh, oftentimes frustration or uh, uh, they might feel that they're, they're being held back when, in what they want to do. Yes, frustration. Um, can you write it now? Yeah, I will try to put it uh, feels, yeah. Uh, so commonly, and this, I, I go in this workshop back and forth to um, discussing the methodology design thinking and going back into the uh, exercise at hand. So zooming a little bit out, what I always see when you've been doing this with post-its, um, it's much easier to see what, what a person says or thinks and, and not that much what he does or feels. Why would that be? Um, Arthur. Sorry, I had to unmute my mic. Um, could you please rephrase the question? So in this exercise of design thinking, we want mm -hmm. to empathize with um, the person um, at hand in this, at this moment, a data scientist. Yes. And doing such an exercise, or, or you can also do it for a user of a product, etc. It's much easier uh, to, to address, uh, say, the left top and the right top quadrant. Why would that be? Why is it harder to fill in the do and the feel? Because um, it's easier to examine those things and the, the do and the feels, you will always have to ask the extra questions to get the feelings, uh, um, well, more explicit, I guess. Yeah. Um, what I also sometimes hear is that you need to be in connection with a person to really right. see what he's doing. So is it really that a data manager or a data science manager sees a data scientist to know what he does? Or can, is, is his work visible, let's say differently, um, and, and left alone what he feels, then you need, really need a connection. Where saying is in the communication, so you do read the emails, I don't have data, or <laughs> that, that type of things. And things is our theoretical understanding of uh, what he would have meant or what, what the background there is. Okay, um, I see now a lot of uh, writings. Um, in the, the, indeed, he's doing programming. Um, can we already see a little bit of uh, uh, lining here? Uh, I see what is my assignment. I cannot get reliable data. Data quality is not good enough. Insufficient data for the task. Frustration, stuck, powerless. Uh, negative emotions, of course, with the context of, an, uh, of difficulties, that's, that's an, a, an, a good one. Um, I don't have enough time. We're not on the same page. Uh, so miscommunication or, or that type of stuff. And get a requirements, bring loose ends together, connect business to, with uh, action and programming. Not heard, indeed. Um, so naturally, which I almost wanted to do, is to summarize already now um, what, what we define as an, a problem statement. So the next, next step from empathize phase would also be defining the problem. Um, but before we're doing that, we're going to do another exercise of the empathy phase, but now in the context of the manager. So let's uh, copy this part to know it later. Um, and then we're going to do the next exercise, which is um, the persona canvas. So Nick, you joined later. Did, were you already familiar with the design thinking principles? Uh, not, uh, not, I haven't uh, come across them in recent memory. No. Okay, okay. 
So um, just to give an example here, the, this is the persona canvas. It's also a method to um, give substance on the uh, empathy phase, which actually empathizes uh, on a different um, um, way. Here you see this canvas. You have negative trends, positive trends. There are needs. Uh, there are headaches, there are opportunities, there are fears and there are hopes. And all these type of, of like properties of, of a persona help you to empathize with the persona and would in the end of the design thinking um, acquire or, or, or enrich your problem solving uh, techniques. So also this we were going to fill in. Uh, let's see if I can do this um, also in the whiteboard share. Oh, and we have the same thing. I cannot paste a picture here. So let's do it like this. Can I do it? So let's see if I can do it like this. So if we now think of the data science manager in hand and we take the data science manager to um, empathize with him or her um, and can we then see the negative trends we observe there for example negative trends from the environment what 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 type of context around the the data science manager negatively influences uh, uh, in a trend um, can we formulate that Please just popcorn style join the discussion. So, um, Brian. Can you, um, did you already work as a data science manager, Brian? Sorry, <laughs> I keep trying to unmute. Uh, no, I, I have had uh, some managerial experience in, uh, in the field of uh, education, but not as a, in the data science field. As I said at the beginning, I, I, I just switched actually to this field about uh, eight months ago. Um, so I've been asked to, to help think uh, about uh, broadening our team. Yes. So what would you d describe as a negative trend around um, a data science manager? What would be a negative trend? Um, as I don't have that much experience in this field, uh, a difficult yes. question, but I, but I can imagine uh, if your quarterly uh, uh, numbers are declining and you have uh, the, the, the top management breathing down your throat saying, uh, make, make your data scientist uh, uh, <laughs> perform some miracles today, I guess that could influence you uh, negatively, but that's just thinking aloud. Yes, yes. And, and not from experience. Um, definitely, so, um, so the, the reports and the quarterly, uh, so what are, this, this is a trend, so in, in this canvas you really want to like uh, structure it so the trend actually is uh, like the, the the quarterly reports right and and the business is going down that's the trend say um, then you already described multiple properties on this board so what is then for example the headache or the fear can you what you just said distribute it more over the canvas I'll give it a try so the let me see, what do you mean exactly with headaches? 
so you described a context, say a quarterly report, mm -hmm. um, where the business goes down. So that's the trend of yes. the environment. But you already like went one step further, what that meant to the person. So what would then, for example, be a headache is that he gets uh, emails from his boss uh, stating uh, the performance needs to go uh, up. Yeah. Maybe you can even distillate there a fear of underperformance or a fear of missing uh, KPIs or a fear of... Um, not getting a promotion. <laughs> for example, for example. Yeah. So yeah. not getting a promotion. Or not getting more uh, funds for your team. Funds, yes. Not getting enough funds. Enough, uh, funds, yes. Um, headache, so um, uh, reporting uh, low KPIs. Yes. So, uh, Arthur, can you also do some such an example? So, say uh, maybe a positive trend, and then distillate uh, multiple parts of this trend, which acts to the data science manager. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think that one of the positive trends at the water board I'm currently working at is that uh, from the top of the management, there's a uh, a push for uh, getting data science in place. So um, it's actually a part of the strategy of the company and the uh, fundings are at hand. So that helps a lot. Yes. Indeed. And, and, and what is then the, the, the result of that in opportunities, hopes or, or fears maybe even? Well, the opportunities we have that actually I could, uh, uh, I have hired uh, two, two good people in the last months and uh, we're able, uh, finally, to be honest, uh, able to, to uh, give them all the tools they need, the environment they need to start working. And uh, we have a clear assignment they they have to start work uh, with um, so we can get uh, people involved in a positive way now and uh, stop with all the uh, discussion uh, we, we had uh, beforehand and okay so um, yes yeah, hope, hope is that we will get some results in the next coming months. And uh, yes. we're, we're looking at green lights currently. So uh, yeah, that's, that's good hope. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, maybe uh, of Afolabi, if I uh, pronounce it correctly. You joined the session. Um, so just uh, jump in. You're on mute. Yes. Yes. Uh, I think for me, it would be more of like, um, I'd like to say like improving data quality and being able to make sure that uh, um, maybe du uh, duplicates or um, data are in the right order in order to make like good decisions with them. So what you would, we would need to be more of like a need would be getting the right owners or the right owners of the data, getting them um, the right support that they would need and the right, um, get, get the right support from the top executives that they would need in order to make decisions on data improvement. Okay, okay. Um, maybe, uh... 
but it's a good point here is to to append a little bit more about the need so um if i know that already one get the right support uh, from the top executives what what does the person more really want so already scanning like in a persona canvas all these trends positive negatives this gives headaches and opportunities fears and hopes and of course this is an example in this workshop for yourself and your team you it's really wise to to plot this further and 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 spend more time on it to fill it for your case in a broader way but in this hypothetical case um zooming in on the a, a common uh, data science manager. I think the, the point already here is a very good one. Get the right support of top executives. Um, because right support already um, means that even though negative trends go in, uh, it's not that you need to uh, fear from a promotion because the right support is there uh, to do that. Uh, and at the other hand, um, what already in the positive trend, the, the right support converts into having better opportunities. Can we formulate more uh, common difficulties um, and the, the, the need to really, um, uh, what, what does a data science manager more needs than right support of top executives? What? Yeah, Arthur? Yeah, I think, uh, first of all, of course, a team to, to do the work with. Um, uh, yeah, and hire, hire the right people, not just people. <laughs> and um, a platform to, to do the work on, so data and tooling, and, and have uh, freedom of tooling. And uh, a proper assignment, well, that has been a bit of a challenge in my case, uh, but we finally have some now. Yes. That, that's already quite some needs here, right? Mm -hmm. um, so if we then go back into, uh, copy this one also. Um, dive into the presentation. So what we actually did with two exercises. So we did in the empathy phase, um, we dive into um, like the data scientist and we dove into uh, the data science manager. And we, we said, okay, what does this data science, uh, data scientist say, think, does, or feel? And we uh, filled in the persona canvas, for example, for the data science manager. And um, what the next phase is actually defining a problem statement. So zooming into these personas of the team um, and the manager of the team, we already saw some trends there, some commonalities. So a problem statement in the defining phase should be captured in a human centered centered terms rather than focused on business goals. So it's not that you say, okay, I need the KPI of this, or I need to three, have three successful pilots. No, it's more in formulating sentences like, how might we, and then formulate um, basically wishes or, or, or gains uh, based on problems addressed in the empathy phase. Um, so, can we already see a commonality in the two um, exercises? Um, let me take also the board so that I can see you guys. Um, so, maybe Nick, did you saw a commonality in the two uh, perspectives of the data science 
uh, data scientist and the data science manager. What was a common difficulty in both, actually? Oh, I guess they both referenced uh, getting support uh, in some case. Yes, support. Uh, the term support is a very uh, nice word. Um, can you phrase support in, in a sentence starting with how might we? Mm, how, might, uh, how might we support our data scientists to deliver projects on time or deliver projects? Data scientist. Nice, nice. I'm going to write this one. Um, how can we uh, how can we support the scientist? And then you had um, yeah. How might we support data scientists to deliver projects on time or within a reasonable amount of time? Am I still sharing my screen? And How can we support data scientists to deliver on time? Okay, um, next one, uh, Brian. What did you see in other commonality between what we already wrote down to empathize with both the data scientist and data science manager? Um, I guess they, they both experienced some, uh, some stress or uh, uh, a feeling of, uh, of helplessness, so things that they, they don't have control over. Yes, so. yes, definitely, definitely. And how can you uh, formulate that one, starting with how can we, how might we? Let me see, yeah, uh, Nicholas is, uh, question kind of encapsulates this also, I guess, but maybe we can. But this focuses on support, but you, yeah. you used a different word, right? Yeah. Um, you I had guess the keyword was, was uh, uh, not helplessness, but uh, uh, a lack of control. Yes. Um, Maybe something in the likes of how, how uh, might we empower our, our data science team? And, okay, I will uh, refine both uh, one step later. Okay, this is a very nice one. Um, Maybe uh, author. No, sorry, I can't, can't think of anything right now. Yeah, and well, um, yeah, generally the, 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 thing, the, the thing that I run into, which we currently solved for one uh, assignment is that, um, yeah, we have to manage expectations. I think that that is the key word. How can how how might we manage expectations? Uh, because it's it's um, currently uh, a lot of the problems we have in our company um, are 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 being um, how do I put that? Um, the the phrase I hear more more often than not is as soon as we have good data scientists in place and data science, we can solve a lot of problems in our company. And that might not be true, of course. Uh, some things you can, you can solve without all the data science in place. You just have to work together. And that's, that's expectation uh, management, I guess. I don't know how to phrase it in, in how it might be, but this is one of the common problems I run into. Is it communication? Um, yeah, or part of it. Part of part it. Part of it. Okay. Uh, because it's it's more like if you run into a problem, which is 
maybe just a, a, a process you have to be, be, be clear about and clarify uh, uh, between teams, you can solve it that way. You don't need data science to, to clarify a process, for example. And that's just taking responsibility in my point of view. Yeah. I don't. I don't know how to phrase it in in one 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 uh, uh, small phrase, but. Um. Okay. How can we? Uh, but you can maybe phrase it better to the. Um, think of yeah. the persona in the mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. What what, what is the effect of the issue you were kind of describing yet? But uh, what was the persona behind it, and what was the feeling or stress or? or yes, I think effect? it's still from the manage management point of view. Is how can we manage our expectations? Because people expect a lot of us, from, but we're we're not a one one stop sol uh, problem solving shop, of course. How? How can might we manage? We uh, expect. Expectations yeah, man or our, manage manage our expectations, I guess. Which of course is is down to communication, um, but it starts with this problem. Yes, yes. Um, I of uh, of for Lavi. Um. Yeah, I think how can we, um, how can we uh, limit the, how can we limit the implication of tools? Or how can, I don't know how to phrase that really, but it's more of like the challenges of, um, the challenges that people get or uh, people get when, deploying of tools or using tools that has been deployed. So, uh, so does, is this captured in empowerment? Because empowerment mm -hmm. also facilitates maybe um, the tooling. Oh, okay. Or no, yeah, I, yeah, I think so, I think so. And I think you written, you talked about, someone has talked about empowerment already. So, if that's the case, that would be how how can we source for funds, or how can um, how can we make sure that we uh, we have um we have um we have allocated budgets for data science. How um and how um uh, can we uh, how might we how oh, oh might how oh might we allocate funds for data science? Yes. So, of course, both this is like an introduction to data of the to design thinking, and we are executing design thinking to the problem at hand. So, seeing now the four um, statements. Yes. Um, and then actually the, the exercise is to formulate it in a human centered terms. And, and that's of course always the pitfall, not formulated in business goals. Um, so if we see now these four sentences, um, just in this open discussion, which of them are mostly in the spectrum to business goals and which are more in, um, human-centered uh, from empathy uh, based. Maybe um, Afolabi, you can uh, like see those four sentences. Which one do you think it's more business call-like? Um, I think the, the last one, how can we allocate funds for data science is more business call-like. And also, um, how can we manage uh, expectations to seems more to cost across both business goal and um, 
Cost Across Business Goal and Iman um, Goal to then how to how, how we empower our data team will be more of like a team goal or or a data science goal. How might, how might we empower our data science team is more like a human human center goal yes and um how, how can we support our data scientists is more human center goal um of course it's always in a gray area there is no right and wrong here mm -hmm. I, I just want to challenge you all to think of this that thinking in design thinking um making a problem statement human-centered will gain you problems that when solving the team is actually executing in a more holistic better way and by that you will obtain business goals so not striving to solve the business goal at first um, will help you to really yeah manage the common difficulties better well then the effect will in the end also be the business goals but that is only the after effect and not in the direct cause of trying to solve the problem does that make sense okay i see some nodding yeah very interesting uh, uh, idea okay thanks um so we actually now, uh, just by the sake of time, we need just to choose one to do for the next exercise. So let's do some uh, voting. Brian, which one would you want to execute further? Uh, depends on the exercise, I guess. So <laughs> can you give a, a kind of an idea what we're doing next? So, so next, we're going to do the next phase. It's ideate phase. We're going to brain dump or brain writing possible solutions or possible scenarios to solve or to uh, answer the question. Yes. So which would you find most interesting to hear ideas of the audience? Um, let me see. I, I think the, the first and second ones, they, they kind of uh, uh, encapsulate the, the same kind of issues. Um, and I'm, I'm interested in, in what kind of ideas we can think up together and in how you can support a, a data science team. So I choose Brilliant. the first one. Okay. So let's do this one. Um, so just to jump one step uh, back to the, to the process. So actually we empathized to the, to the people, really uh, uh, also in a very short time, but we uh, looked at the people, what, what do they feel? What do they want? What do they say? What are common uh, uh, things which are uh, addressed? You can also do this in the full team. You can do this in your own team. We, def we define some statements uh, about problems which we saw in common. And now we're going to ideate about possible solutions to the, uh, to the questions we addressed. And we chose one, which is how to support a team uh, to deliver on time. And we, are cho uh, we choose now uh, one methodology in ideation phase. If you Google ideation phase of design thinking, you, feel, you find again, like five to 10 methodologies to do so. We just chose here one uh, for the sake of example, um, which is a, a nice one. It's a brain writing. Um, maybe Viviana, do you like to explain it? Uh, yeah, I can do that. Um, yeah, it's a kind of brainstorming exercise, but instead of um, like uh, writing all your ideas down at once, uh, everybody, uh, got some time for themselves to write down three IDs and then um, 
when you have done that, you can uh, send these three IDs to another uh, uh, participant and that other participant can also write down again three IDs and then you can uh, get inspiration from the other participants, which is uh, of course an advantage. So you can move on on the IDs of others. And also, yeah, normally when you are like really in a group and everybody's yelling IDs, some people, most mostly introverted <laughs> people, uh, cannot so easily share their ideas and in this way everybody can do that. So in this way you will, we will collect uh, like lots of IDs and in the end we're gonna pick one or maybe few IDs which we think are the best, uh, best solutions to the problem we just uh, cho choose. Yes, and uh, usually this goes um, in a dynamic matter if you are in a group uh, without Corona and we would be in a room then you would really do this like giving the paper to the next person, right? So yes. we're going to try this by private messages in, in the chat room. So imagine that you have post-its and you write your IDs and you would give it to the next person. We're going to try in the group session a private message in rounds, the IDs together. So just to make it very, practical um, you you write down the ids and receive it from a neighbor and then append your ids to it and send them the whole thing to the next so let me see if that works here in this zoom session um, one question yes so say i'm a uh, person number two then i'm sending uh, six ideas to person number three. Is that correct? Yes. So yeah. in the first round, everybody sends three IDs, and then in the second round, everybody sends six IDs. Okay. Yeah. And then so on. And I think maybe it's easiest to do it alphabetically so that you send it to the person after you. Okay. Thank by you. The, by the first name. Yes. Yeah. So that's already a brain uh, exercise because multiple people start with A here. <laughs> Let's see. Um, so did everybody write down the question uh, in, in, uh, to, to point that one out again? So how can we support data scientists to deliver on time? That's the question on hand. Where are we going to ideate? Yes? Um, and then uh, the, the idea is to, to send the IDs to the next person in the group. Um, did everybody find his alphabetical name, uh, neighbor? Let's uh, uh, write in the chat your alphabetical neighbor and then we know that we don't have doubles. Let's see, how can I see the chat? Lara, do you also join? Uh, for me, I think it's a bit challenging to answer. <laughs> okay, I'm sending to Nick. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, this is not. Yes. Okay, so let's do that uh, for the next uh, two minutes. Um, so until uh, 38. Um, write your IDs to your neighbor.
Okay, so 38, so please send them if not done already. Um, gather the ideas. And then um, send them to the next person in chain. who will be my next person in chain, actually. Okay, let's see. Um... Because now we send him to someone else? That's not necessary. I think we can send it now to the same person again, yeah, right? That, that's, that's easier, yes. Let's do that. Just ping pong your ideas uh, and append them. Uh, So then I resend my ideas to, to Brian, is, th is that what you're saying? Yes, then yeah, okay. you have a carousel of ideas. Okay, thanks. And I pen them with three new ones. That's the, uh, that's the idea. So net, uh, with the last round, uh, please um, append another three from already the received ones. So ideally, if you manage to have enough inspiration to append every time three new ones, you're already going to send now 12 ideas to the next person because you received nine from your neighbor and you can append another three and then you have 12 ideas to um, send. Sorry guys, just to clarify, uh, we're sending the three ideas to the same person again? Or yes, person? yes. Okay. Okay, so let's aggregate everything. Um, let's make a dump um, into now to everyone. What what you what you now aggregates uh, can aggregate.
So um, people are just typing still, but um, because of the time. But you just saw that we actually in six, seven minutes, I think we have now 15 to um, maybe 15 uh, ideas. So this is a powerful method to um, obtain a lot of separate ideas to, to, to see it uh, next to like an open brainstorm where we all would have given the floor then maybe we only had ideas of two people. Or um, here you really focus on an, a, a channel to, of two persons, but with the carousel, you are inspired by others uh, to, to append. Of course, in the Zoom exercise, this is a little bit more uh, <laughs> uh, working around with the tools we have, but. Uh, think that you do this uh, on a pen and paper, you can physically give it through. Uh, it would be uh, working pride, uh, pretty much. Um, let's see, uh, we have lots of ideas in the chat. Um, lots about facilitating, lots of uh, ensuring enough skills, clearly defined tasks, provide a clear and feasible assignment, et cetera, et cetera. So what I now want to do with you is to um, share my screen first. Share. Okay, now we're back and share my screen. So the last round is um, we need to pick uh, an ID that it's best. So that's like with brain writing, but to, to do that even more conveniently in this small group. So this is a one uh, a very nice thing to do um, if you are with brain writing and do that in the last round. But we are going to do that a little bit differently. We're going to summarize the best ideas in a methodology called impact and effort. Um, let me show your screen. So basically ideas can be put into a 2D plane um scaling them into impact and effort and doing so you can do as a manager of a data science team very easily think of this as a flip over and you would have already prepared this and you have the post-its ready uh, going around and you have these post-its you can place them on the board directly like relative in impact and relative in effort and clearly you see groups there Maybe some are, are very uh, big in effort and not that much in impact. And they are simply a waste of money or a waste of effort. Um, of course, you want to have the quick wins because as a data science manager, you can now already prioritize the ideas into quick wins. And that's what we're going to do with the ideas at hand. So let me see if I can open the chat again. So, um, let's see. Um, Alpha Labby, deliver results frequently. Um, would that be a big effort? Um, no because it, it's going to be easy for them to do and it's at any stage that they are in or, or whatever project they're working on currently they just have to like um, deliver it so that they can share uh, their views and other people can put um, their input into it to help them know what what the next step to check so i think it's a quick win if i'm looking at this a quick win, but yes. you also see the impact as large, right? Yeah. Okay, let me. Um... Okay. I replaced a little bit there. Um, Brian, let them present the results frequently. That's the same same point, okay? Um, uh, Arthur. Um, 
frequently again, um, make sure they have the tools in hand. Where do you, would you place that one? Um, <clears throat> I think initially it will be a big effort, um, but the impact is also very large, of course. Yeah, so actually it's more in a big bet because having a, a expensive JIRA uh, licenses would not per se mean, uh, but uh, it's a big effort to install an Atlassian properly, but mm -hmm. then it's a big impact, let's say. Yes, okay. indeed. Uh, let's pick um, one of Brian. Give the room to explore the business data and come up with new ways to create value. Give them room to explore. Let me abbreviate it to that. Brian, where would you place it? You're on mute. <laughs> Unmute. <laughs> uh, I think because it would be difficult to, to, to have a, sh a short time box that it would, be, it would take a lot of effort just because it, it might take a long time. Um, and the other thing is you're not sure uh, of what they will deliver. So, uh, hmm. <laughs> I really want to place it between big bets and a waste of money, but uh, to keep things positive, I'll say big bets. <laughs> it's uh, not exact science, this. Okay, uh, yeah. Nikolais, can you uh, take one which you like as an idea and place it? Uh, yeah, I think um, when I can see a celebrate project successes, that ah, seems yeah. like a, a quick win. And uh, morale boosting. Just, um, celebrate uh, successes, you say. Yeah. Successes. Successes. It's a quick win, definitely. Okay. Um, Viviana, which one uh, do you want to add? Um, yeah, one that was a bit correlated with that, but uh, clearly define what project success looks like. So ah, one, I think. yes. And it's also, I think, a quick win. EOD or success. That's definitely good to know. So, um Alfar, did, did you also join uh, the the one yeah i did uh, make sure they have tooling at, at hand is, this, okay. is that your question yeah yes make sure they have the tooling at the, oh yeah this one yes. yeah yeah we did they yeah, are they, do you have a, did you uh, find another idea yeah it's i think working sprints is a nice one is that a big effort to change into sprints, into agile um, working? Um, no, it's not a big effort. It's just a way of work. Um, and yeah, the, Im the impact could, could be very large. So. Um, okay, where would you place it? Uh, low effort, high impact. Uh, Relatively? That, yeah. yeah, yeah. Here? Or no. Yeah, a bit up high because uh, I can relate it to, to the, the, the current ICT uh, um, uh, department, which is still working waterfall and delivery processes and, and stuff like that. And uh, we do work in sprints. We, we, we do work agile and deliver our work on time. Uh, so the, the difference in, in working uh, with working uh, the, the uh, I, let's say the classic way is, is quite huge. So we worked at, an, um, at the central question, how can we support data scientists to deliver on time? And actually two quick wins look very similar, of course, deliver results frequently and work in sprints, both is basically the same thing uh, or the same result. Um, so in this way, we actually came up with the low hanging fruit for the people who 
do not work yet in sprints as a data science manager to execute this strategy and change the team into working in sprints and deliver results more frequently. Um, yeah, and then of course also um, doing the other things and you can map all ideas in the chat, you can copy it to yourself and also play this exercise. So to summarize, uh, because we just now did uh, three phases, like the empathize phase, we did the def uh, defining phase and um, we did the ideation. Of course, now having such uh, an ideation phase and we ideated multiple uh, solution directions, of course, you need to test this and you need to validate the assumption that it has a big impact. So in design thinking, it's also after ideate, you need to prototype. So do not start with saying, okay, my full delta is goes to agile way of working because <laughs> I think it has an impact because then the effort will not gain, uh, not, not, not uh, support it uh, directly. So prototype. Uh, make a very uh, small prototype, maybe in, in one or two people. Uh, say, uh, uh, test this assumption, do the storytelling, gain support with the so storytelling, because you need a few mock-ups and you, you need a, a few uh, prototypes and the testing of the early adopters to storytell uh, that's a success. Then go into pilot phase. Pilot means that you need in a real life uh, department say um, and go into there uh, to a real demo of, of this strategy. If this one department uh, supports the assumption you tested already, then you can as a manager make the business model. Change is always expansive so you need to do the business model of the organizational change um, and like argue that this is a good change because the pilot was successful. Business model is presented to the management team and you uh, get the support, the budget to do the organizational change and the, the, the idea is implemented. Um, to close in time, um, we um, have like a big uh, uh, checkout round. Um, because actually I want to hear your story about the um, like what did you uh, uh, like what was your opinion about design thinking first of all and secondly what would you um, like do in the next phase or the next few months with the knowledge learned how are you going to execute it and um, uh, can we help each other um, co convert this type of knowledge, this type of methodology in a game um, for yourself or in your career steps to becoming a data science manager or becoming a better data science manager. So um, who can I give the round first? Maybe um, Nick. So in this open discussion of a checkout, um, did you learn new stuff and um, what, what uh, did you learn and uh, how are you going to execute it in your work? That's a good question. Uh, yeah, I quite like how um, the structure is quite formalized. Uh, you know, you do this and this and this and certain parts of it really help you focus in because I think a lot of us tend to skip steps like empathy um, and whatnot. Uh, as to where I would use it. Um, uh, certainly a company I might be working with in the future, they need to reset their data strategy or reevaluate it. Uh, it's kind of a big hairy topic, um, but using some of these, these techniques, uh, certainly on the nearer side, uh, would um, help uh, tease out what the problems are and, and how to go about solving them. And, and did you hear new type of problems or were the problems very familiar? Uh, no, I think most of the problems were very familiar to uh, with my experience of data science, yeah. And uh, with the ideas, did you hear new ideas? 
Um, I have to look back. Uh, I haven't had a look, I haven't, haven't had a look over all of them, but uh, all of them seemed uh, like I'd come across them in one form or another before. Okay. So um, maybe I don't see the names anymore. Um, let's see. Brian, it was. Yes, I remember. Um, Brian, mm -hmm. how are you going to um, execute design thinking to when you're becoming, say, a uh, data science manager? So you're still um, preparing, right? If you have, say, in a few years, a um, data science team, how would you organize the data science here? And, and use design thinking to uh, obtain uh, solutions for the for the uh, common difficulties? Yeah, uh, big question. Uh, I guess, first of all, it, I thought it was a very uh, uh, helpful session. There's, uh, there are some things that, that I recognize, but there was a lot, especially in the practical parts that, that were new to me. So that's uh, something I'll take with me. I think the, the one of the things that, uh, that really resonates with me is the that focus on the empathy, that holistic approach, not looking at only at the, the, the business, but looking at the people. I think that is something that I will definitely uh, focus on. And I think, uh, practically speaking, the, the, uh, the impact and, uh, and the effort uh, exercise, I guess, I think that's a, a, a very, a uh, fast uh, way to to decide uh, where you're going uh, where you're going to put your priorities with the team. So if you have a lot on your uh, backlog, I think that would be a, a way to to figure out which things you're going to do first and which things might have to get off the the backlog. So uh, thanks. And uh, Arthur. Yeah, I think for me, indeed, um, putting the focus on people first rather than the, than the outcomes or the business outcomes, that, that is what suits me. So uh, this really is a, is, a, is a good method. I didn't come across it uh, before, to be honest. I, I did some reading about it, but never gave it any thought, to be, uh, to be honest. Uh, but it really got me interested. So I... Uh, um, I guess I will find uh, uh, and read some some books uh, first and uh, read a bit more about it, get a bit, bit more into detail about it. And uh, yeah, then certainly we'll start um, uh, practicing it and, and uh, uh, see how to take my team forward, especially in the phase where I am, where I'm currently building a new team uh, to... to, to uh, um, uh, really draw my situation a bit more. There's, there's 20 people in my team coming from the business, uh, all de uh, decentralized main, uh, data managers uh, beforehand, but now in a central team. Uh, so all eyes are on me uh, to, to get it all uh, going. And uh, so I really need some, some, some good tooling and, and way of thinking uh, to get things forward uh, swiftly. Uh, so this certainly will help me. So yeah, thanks a lot. It was a, it was a fun session to be honest. So uh, thanks. Great, great. And it also um, uh, uh, very nice to do that in a team to for the team building. So I right. always see the um, design thinking as a twofold uh, uh, positive outcome. It's the ideas that come out, which you as a data science manager know, okay, how to prioritize and go to the board and say, okay, I want to, do this type of change, but doing it with a team and like in this session, really participate in the in the thought experiments and but also to understand the common difficulties there. It's bonding. So yeah, indeed, indeed. Okay, um, thanks. Uh, Afo Lavi. Um, for me, it's. It was more like being people focused, having a people focused goal. And I'm um, also like what you said at the end, like focusing on um, small prototypes in order to um, prove your value. And when you have results in that, you can present it 
and be able to defend it and um, implement it in, in enterprise wide and um, being able to streamline improvements um, that as being able to streamline the improvements that you have built. So that's what I've gotten from the section. So, and are you currently a data science manager or a data scientist? No, I'm actually a, a data. I'm actually in data governance, so more, more focused on the data science aspect. And are you going to use design thinking, or what would be your um, uh, first thing to execute with design thinking to, uh, um, to address? That's like I said, it's going to be like um, running like small prototypes of trying to put in some of the things I've learned, in, but trying to like um, try to like um, put in some of the things I've learned today and be more people focused and try to m m make sure that we have uh, a, an improved analytical framework. From what from what we have built, and just try and um, get in like people focus goals, and be able to um, be able to recommend um, various improvements from what from what you guys have shown us today. So, okay. Um... So there's, um, I guess this is, was the uh, session. Uh, it is uh, done a bit sooner than uh, expected, but I also expected more uh, attendees. Um, but um, I think we gave the main message. Um, it would be always nice to keep in touch if there are any, any questions or um, to share thoughts. I would really like to hear um, if you uh, used design thinking to in your team to address common difficulties and uh, like the, the the small strategy of effort and impact and address them, um, would love to hear the feedback if it worked uh, or uh, what you obtained. So, but this uh, the lesson is uh, finished. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Casper. Yep. Thank you. I yeah, appreciate it. Enjoyed Thank you, Jasper. I yeah. really enjoyed the process, and I'm sure I'm also going to take some uh, learnings from the design thinking uh, process as well, too. Thank you. Thank I've you. also uh, made a, a copy of the chat. I've saved the chat, so if you'd like, I can also share it with you. Um, I'll write my email right here for any of you. Oh. Could, you maybe like post it on the, the could you maybe post it on the Slack channel? Yes, of course, we can do that as yeah, well. Okay, cool. Okay, great. And then now, uh, usually you go for a beer, right? Or something? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> next time. Yeah, next time. Thanks a lot, everyone, and have a good Thank evening. You. Have a great evening. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. So... Uh, Jasper, thank you so much. Was this something what you wanted? I mean, we didn't even talk beforehand, Laura and uh, you, um, but um, how was it? I think uh, it went uh, beautifully. I love how you engaged uh, the group. Uh, so, you know, keep kept them engaged and everything. So that was very nice. Um, yeah, thank you so much. I think that's, that's what uh, we we could do in the next uh, if we when we do it again we'll have a conversation we also have um, um, a subscription with mural and miro uh, where also we can use that um, with the post-its and everything next time we're happy to offer um, our account for for this if you are not using already so, and because I, I, could, I could see you wanting to do more like post-its and a little bit more movement or whatever. I think in Mural or Miro, that's, uh, you can do that. But I think with the whiteboard, you've done really beautifully. It's, uh, it was great, I think, to get the ideas, to get them input. And finally, 
I think the, the design thinking is is a critical skill for data scientists, and um, we are also uh, I including it in our curriculum, direct indirectly, doing the, letting them to do some kind of consultancy process with that uh, in the coming cohorts. So yeah, it's uh, it was very well received in that sense. Uh, it solves many problems in the organiz organization that they could not solve otherwise, to be honest with you. Yeah, definitely. I also see it kind of as a bias of the data scientist to be more um, analytical, let's yes. say like that. <laughs> and, yes. and that's why you need to stress the empathy uh, phase, uh, really to know, okay, what is actually the other person feeling? Is he frustrated or the emotions or, yes, definitely. Good. Yeah, I was uh, uh, fantastic. Very... Well, mm -hmm. yeah, I appreciate your time and energy. Okay, Laura. Yeah. Oh, Laura. Yeah. yeah, I was very happy. I loved uh, the the process. I really liked. Um, I I mean, I've seen a bit of design thinking before, but I really loved how you um, had them share the ideas with one another person and then build on it because that is such a quick way to gather a lot of ideas. Uh, like you said, in just uh, seven minutes. So I think uh, that's definitely something I will, I will take. Uh, of course, I had also uh, hoped and expected a few more people at least uh, from uh, the registration numbers. And we did do our best uh, sending it out uh, through email campaigns, et cetera. Um, but I think those that were there were luckily like very ready to participate uh, and jump on. So I really appreciate both uh, your time with Cosper and Vivienne. Okay, great. Thank you so much. And um, I don't know, uh, with uh, Christella, uh, we also talked about maybe a meeting tomorrow to talk about uh, some blog or something to append to this series. Um, I don't know if that's a good time. Uh, I think so. Tomorrow, uh, um, what, what time? Uh, what time is, because I know about this call, but I can, I don't see it in my calendar. What time do you have it on your calendar? I didn't, it was not yet um, uh, oh. confirmed. planned, yes. Okay, shall we, um, um, uh, shall we plan it? Because I know Cristela is generally available on Wednesdays. Well, how about scheduling something next Wednesday? Well, Would be perfect, yes. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, for uh, me, any time between 11 to 1 is good. Clara and Vivian uh, and Casper, is, is it good for uh, you? 12, 12 is perfect for me. Perfect. Yeah, Clara? works for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me too. Okay, so we'll make uh, 12. Uh, let's schedule maybe 45 minutes or an hour. Yeah, 45 minutes is fine, okay. I think. Yes. I, mm -hmm. I will I'll send you an invite. Okay, Lara, so you'll send an invite for this. This is for also the collaboration options, right? Uh, yes. Exactly. Precisely. Yes. Exactly. Is there anything that you would want to, you would want us to think ahead or, um, um, or to kind of uh, be ready to share or show or whatever? Or yeah. is, shall we brainstorm just? I, I think the brainstorm is fine and we can just look ahead if, if you have on the other learning opportunities or teaching opportunities for us. Um, yeah. And maybe uh, there was the discussion if, if a more like sustainable collaboration can yes. be made. Would be yes. nice. I think so. I think so. I think uh, I have some ideas. Um, I, I think, for example, yeah, you know, t taking this series to uh, uh, you know, broader communities, uh, maybe, per, you know, doing one summit around the series, like a two day summit, bringing everything together. So we can talk all about that uh, when we meet. That's uh, that we, we would be very excited. We love collaboration and we, we do a great job of uh, coming together with folks, like minded folks. Great. Okay, see you Wednesday then. Have a nice evening. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Bye Thank bye. you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.